Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be discussing the skill tree in Sifu and how it all works. In this game, there's a bunch of different combos that you can become capable of as you play through the game. You earn experience by taking out your enemies and advancing through levels, and you use that experience to unlock skills on the skill tree. You can also... You also do not unlock them permanently until you do a certain thing, which I'll explain in a little while. So let's start off with the 360 swing focus. Uh, it costs two bars on the focus attack bar. For staff weapons, a wide attack capable of knocking down multiple enemies. Pretty straightforward. You just hold down, you know, left trigger and then you aim to the upper left and then you can do the swing. Very straightforward. Uh, the next one is strong sweep focus. One, one bar on the focus attack bar powerful strike to the enemy's knee knocking them down for a while you can follow this up by holding down b or circle on the playstation controller to basically just punch the person in the face a couple times as well it's a nice little quick little follow-up for extra free damage uh, from there we have snap kick which is up up y or up up triangle uh, engage attack with important forward movement basically you just run at a target hit that real quick and then you just get like a free a free kick to the waist which staggers them for a moment opening them up for another window of opportunity and then we have spin hook kick this is one of my current favorites you tap y twice and then wait for your foot to hit the ground again and then you tap y again and you'll do a nice spin hook kick it does big damage knocks people down you can follow that up with another uh you can you know, hold b or circle over them and you'll get a couple free punches in or you can just leave them on the ground and focus on a different target uh this is a combo leading to a powerful high kick capable of knocking down multiple enemies you can hit i i did pull it off once i hit four enemies with this one and it knocked three of them down and staggered the other one so it was really good uh the next up is charged back fist you just hold y for this you just basically just almost almost just hit them with the bottom of your hand it's just it does good damage too. unleash a powerful punch that stuns any enemy so basically just staggers them for a moment you can see the guy holding his head uh you just you just kind of hit him right in the face and it allows you to follow up with more attacks because of the stun from there we have the face face smash focus which costs two bars on the focus attack bar for bat weapons a direct attack to daze your enemy you could see that a lot of these attacks do stuns and dazes. It's because they're special attacks uh, that cost either a little bit of time or, you know, uh, some of the focus bar. So this one, you just, you know, just hit them right in the face and then you just follow up with a whole flurry of attacks as you like to do. I like to follow up this one with the heavy spin hook kick. It just, it just allows you to open up that and just hit them for free with it. Okay, weapon catch. This one is very crucial, I find, early on. Because in the very first level, you'll find a few enemies that will throw these uh, these bottles at you. And with this, you can just catch it and then immediately throw it back afterward. Uh, I do recommend taking this one early if possible. It costs 500 experience. And then going from there, it's just, it's just nice to have. So you can just throw the bottle right back in your enemy's face and then follow up with a combo. The pushback can uh, cancel when pushed, regain your balance. This is crucial so that way when you get pushed back by any heavy uh, kick or any, you know, any stun attack from an enemy, it allows you to just kind of regain your footing and get back in the fight faster. It is pretty important when it comes to fighting multiple enemies because if you get staggered when there's multiple enemies around, they will just bounce you around like a ping pong ball. So this is good to have. All right, ground counter. Uh, left bumper on timing while knocked down while on the ground parry to counter your enemy's attack so you do end up getting knocked down once in a while and they will try to take the opportunity to punch you kick you whatever when you're on the ground you can just parry from the ground and basically sweep their leg and knock them over allowing you to have the upper hand next up is environmental mastery this is important as well you hit right bumper near an item and it'll just kick anything on the ground anything that's movable on the ground right at your enemy's face Throw an item, weapon, or object directly from the ground. This is pretty dang good. I've only used it once so far, but it is good to have because it, you know, it staggers. You just hit right bumper near an item and it is a free stagger on any one target. Next up is double palm focus. Two bars on the focus attack bar. Straight strike that applies a destructive push to your enemy. Sends them flying, as you can see. Uh, does not knock him down, though. So I, I don't really like this one, though it is cheaper. 500 experience to unlock. It is on the more affordable side, so there's something to consider there if you just want something to do with that. 
Next up is Flowing Claw, X and then Y quickly or square and triangle. Uh, bare Hand and Staff weapons can uh, make use of this. Fast and Evasive Strike that leaves your back facing the enemy. So basically, you can just... You, you can follow this up. As you can see, the, the kick follow-up there, it, it, it sends them flying. And then over there, you go over there, you hold B or circle, hit them in the face a couple times, or just leave them there and allowing you to focus on other enemies. Uh, chasing strikes, X on a pushed enemy. Attack on a pushed enemy to follow them up and deliver powerful series of strikes. This is very good. It, it's very low damage per hit, but it, it adds up. It adds up quickly. So hey, this is something that I like to use specifically against uh, the first boss of the game. And it, it does pretty well. All right. Crooked foot. Hold Y after a parry. After a successful parry, knock your enemy down with a quick throw. Um, I haven't used this one yet. It seems like it does pretty pretty solid, but it is expensive. Uh, this is something I have to experiment with, but just looking at it. It looks like if you get a parry and then you just hold Y right after the parry, you hit him in the face and then you just knock him down and then you can follow that up with another free attack or go on to your next target. And that, that's something that I feel I, I miss an opportunity on and I'm going to have to make use of that soon myself. Uh, duck Strike. You hold X. Ducking move with forward movement. You just kind of wait for them to swing and then you just do it. And I've not used this myself yet. Again, very expensive. As you can see, 1500 experience on that, but it seems like it's a pretty solid attack. Might be very good for just kind of naturally countering without actually hitting any parry. Next up is vertical strike focus. Cost two bars in the focus attack bar, a powerful blow and the solar plexus that stuns the enemy for a long time. That see that that's a it's only 500 experience as well. Um, that seems like something that I don't know for the cost of two bars. There's a, there's it stuns for a long time, but then why would you not just use? Well, I guess they all cost two bars, so I guess it's just a matter of style, which one you want to go for for the sake of style. They're all the same in that regard, essentially, but all the same. Another one for you to you know spend some experience on if you're trying to just get them all. Uh, invert throw right trigger and then you know use the left analog stick on an enemy dodge towards your target just after a hit to grab them and invert your positions so this is good if you're surrounded by you know enemies in this game will naturally circle around you so this allows you to kind of get you know be become part of that circle and break break the targets uh, you know closest to you next is hook intercept hold left bumper and hold y uh, hook that can withstand attacks during its buildup this is something that if you if you just if you're just not able to parry very well this is something that allows you just kind of deliver damage back uh just kind of charge up when you know they're going to hit you it, this is something that's probably going to be very useful against bosses actually because there's a lot of boss attacks that they just build up so much um stagger on you that why not get a free hit in once in a while you know chasing trip kick why on a pushed enemy attack a pushed enemy to follow and knock them down uh that, that another free knockdown uh so when you when you get into all these abilities and you're able to flow them all together it, this is going to be another thing that allows you to just knock your enemy down uh, so if you're able to utilize a lot of these combos properly it looks like if you can just go about your way and find ways to just knock all your enemies down except maybe a couple and focus them while all these people are on their on their uh on their backs crotch punch left left X. Oh, up on the left analog stick twice and then X. Quick ducking punch that avoids high strikes. That's a bit of a cheap shot. Very expensive experience as well, but uh, hey. When you're outnumbered, why not? Thigh cut focus. Costs three bars on the focus attack bar. For bladed weapons, a damaging slashing attack. Uh, I think this is an attack that the first boss of the game actually has as well. So it looks like you might learn from that. It's an only 500 experience as well. It's just a very expensive on the focus attack bar. Um, the blades I've not used myself yet. I haven't made, made it far enough in the game to use any blades, but I'm assuming they hit very hard, and this attack is only going to be another very hard-hitting thing. Raining strikes. Why and then why? Let me see this. Looks like it... So you got to hit them and then reset and then why again, and it just goes with a flurry of heavy hits. A combo leading to a series of lightning-fast attacks. That looks pretty cool. Um, this is uh, another one that can be very easily confused with one of the earlier combos as well. All you have to do is press Y one last time to get this. Um, this looks like, again, if you're focusing on one target, it allows you to get a lot of damage in very quickly. 
slide kick while, while, while running. Perform a slide kick while running that knocks down enemies. I wonder if you can hit multiple tar targets with this. Uh, all the same, this is another way to... This is actually a great opener to a fight. You just kind of run in, knock someone down, get a bunch of free hits. That's a good go. And the last skill on this tree is Weapon Mastery. Continue to use a weapon until it breaks completely. So, in this game, um, there's a bunch of different weapons, and they will... They, they all break relatively quickly, but they break because they just kind of bend. They, they bend up, or like this bat, it just kind of snapped in half. Uh, when, it, when it snaps in half, you usually just drop it, or when a, like a pipe bends too much, you just drop it. But in this case, it allows you to make use of the handle, like literally using it right down to the very bottom, which is kind of cool. Very expensive skill, but the weapons in this game do hit really hard, allow you to take down targets quickly, and are absolutely worth using every single time. Okay, so to explain how you unlock these skills permanently, if you do not know, as you can see, I have some of these permanently unlocked already. Others I do not. So a lot of them say 5x. If you see the permanent unlock on the bottom right, 5x, and then the experience needed. So what that means is you need to spend that experience five times after unlocking it in a run to permanently unlock it. It doesn't have to be in a single run. You can, you know, say you, you go on one run and you spend... You know, 3,000 experience on charged back fist to unlock it, and then two more times for the permanent unlock. So that'll make it go down to 3x times, you know, 3 times 1,000. So what that means is, if you die on that run, it'll still say it 3 times 1,000. You just have to get 1,000 experience spent on that 3 more times. The the thing is, though, you do have to spend 1,000 to unlock it again on the next run. If you do not unlock it permanently on a run then you will have to unlock it before you can start working on the permanent unlock again. So essentially, you have to buy them all five times, plus every single time you have to unlock it on a new run. And it's pretty straightforward when you when you really think about it, but I, I've gone for a lot of the cheaper ones that are pretty good. These ones, these first four, have served me really, really well. And then I went down here for weapon catch. I, I recommend this one early on as well. And I also went with Flowing Claw because it's just something that allows you to basically hit one guy and then face the other direction if you're surrounded by many, allowing you to just kind of fight multiple people simult simultaneously. But with that said, guys, that's it on this video. Thank you for watching the Skill Tree Breakdown. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor, leave a like on it as well as a comment. Let me know what your favorite ability is. I'm a big fan of the, the roundhouse kick. I, I can't get enough of it. It's just fun to land those spin hook kicks there. It's so satisfying, especially when you hit multiple targets and they all go flying. With that said, guys, I'm out of here for now. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and I'll see you soon for more.